we hardly notice them, perhaps because they have lived with us for a very, very long time. We share our homes, streets and skies, but also joys and concerns. Our towns and villages also belong to an astonishing variety of birds which have learned to live together with human beings in their urban environments, bypassing the dangers we create for them and benefiting from what we do. They are all our neighbours who have come down from the sky. The married life of a sand martin could hardly be described as peaceful. Males without a partner seize on the slightest opportunity to mate with the females of others forcing the latter to be ever vigilant and ready to fight if he wants his future chicks to really be his own. Knowing what is at stake, we can understand why not even the risk of drowning and restrain the fury of the contenders. announcing the first days of spring, the sand martins are reaching Extremadura in the southwest of Spain from the places where they have wintered in Central Africa. They are seeking the proximity of the rivers, lakes and reservoirs where they can recover their strength by feeding on mosquitoes. Once they have recovered, the males begin to prepare their nests to which they will try and attract a female, upon which they will complete it. The place where they are now digging could very well be described as a wedding gift from another species, with which the San Martins share a passion for engineering. Slopes and embankments like this one, the result of human activity, are highly appreciated by the smallest of the swallows which fly over the Iberian Peninsula, especially if, like this one, it has a body of water nearby where their favourite food abounds, mosquitoes and other insects. But the sand martins are not the only ones to benefit from it. It is also a hunting ground for the formidable kingfisher. Formidable, yes, but not infallible. The sand martins form motley colonies with a multitude of nests on the slope. 
Most of the pairs are reusing the ones from previous years. Those which have found them disturbed or destroyed, or which have to dig a new one, spend up to two weeks moving several kilos of earth. They are true ecological engineers capable of modifying the environment where they nest. It is strenuous work which the males have to combine with the constant vigilance of their partners due to the harassment of other males. This little ringed plover also likes to take advantage of human endeavour but doesn't like the hard work so much. She simply leaves her eggs among the loose pebbles of the beaches created by the river or, as in this case, in the gravel pits resulting from human activity. She relies on their perfect resemblance to them to fool potential predators. The love life of another of the sand martin's neighbours is more relaxed. Having also arrived from Africa, the bee-eaters also dig nests and form large colonies, but without the added nuisance of excited suitors to be scared away. When the time for the female to lay her eggs approaches, the male brings her one of her favourite delicacies. Bees. He saves the best prey for her, which he gives her after striking them to remove their poisonous sting. Each male hunts in a small territory near his nest and defends the perch where the female awaits to receive her succulent gifts of love. Humans and bee-eaters share a liking for bees, for which these beautiful birds do not pose a serious threat, as opposed to diseases, invasive species and our pesticides. Rather than engineers, common house martins and swallows, cousins of the sand martins are architects. They build their homes in our homes. With their constant comings and goings in search of mud to make their nests with, they enhance the serene beauty of places like Garovias del Caneta, while they envelope it in a unique soundtrack which the Swifts also take part in. It 
it is the stimulating sound of wildlife which also slips between the age-old cracks of the ancient bridge of Alcantara. This jewel of Roman Hispania, built 19 centuries ago, in some way remains alive under construction owing to the constant work of these birds under its arches. Other Extremaduran monuments like the church of Almendralejo are chosen by another of our winged neighbors to locate their breeding colonies. The lesser kestrels have just arrived from somewhere south of the Sahara where they spend the winter. It is a grueling journey of nearly 3,000 kilometers, which they also cover at night. Their haste to arrive as soon as possible has a dual purpose, to choose the best holes to nest in and to begin courting the females. The amatory tactic of the males, distinguished by their blue-gray heads, is as prosaic as it is effective. They win them through their stomachs. With gifts like this tasty mole cricket, the male of this small bird of prey can rely on having everything to gain. When he has been accepted as a good hunter and a better father, the male will copulate with the female hundreds of times during the breeding season. They thus consolidate their bond and the father ensures he will actually be one. Love is seen and heard in a thousand different ways when spring arrives in the villages and towns of Extremadura. Even the sudden eruption of a spring storm will be able to restrain a passion which announces the arrival of new lives. Even in a heavy downpour, the white storks continue their love games in their homes. Whenever they can, the pair return to the nests of previous years, repairing the damage caused by the rigors of winter.
The result is enormous nests which sometimes end up as true blocks of flats occupied by sparrows, pigeons and starlings. Also inflamed by the passion of love. In order to repair and condition the place where they will raise their chicks, the storks make use of many different materials. And, on occasions, the work of others. They seem to find almost everything useful an attitude which sometimes puts them in awkward, even deadly, situations. This stalk will need hours to free itself from the string it has got tangled up in. strings with which they pad their nests can also be a danger for their future chicks. Many of them are injured or even die because of them each year. A glance at what these huge constructions contain give us an accurate clue as to where they have learned to get it. The white storks have become very knowledgeable of how we manage waste. Nowadays, the places where we process waste are an essential source of food and materials for both the storks and for many other birds. They are even able to interpret the arrival of a lorry as a new supply of food on which to pounce. These inexhaustible paradises of plenty for the storks have helped to increase their numbers and to change their migratory habits. Several thousand white storks choose not to spend the winter away from Extremadura, a region which values and cares for the winged residents which live in its villages and towns. In fact, it was the first region in Europe to create special protection areas for birds in urban environments. An environment which is favorable for so many reasons explains why, for example, Los Barrecos contains the largest colony of white storks in Europe nesting in rocks. They build their nests on the granite boulders which make this unique area a museum of sculptures carved by nature, although they also seem to appreciate the art created by humans. The sculptures erected by the artist Wolf Vostel in Los Barrecos form an alliance with the stork's work and create unusual pieces where nature and art dialogue in harmony. has begun in the colony of lesser kestrels which find shelter on the roof of the bullring in Trujillo. However, life is not the same in all the nests of the neighborhood.
two mouths, however insatiable they may be, are much easier to feed than six. Day after day, both parents do virtually nothing else but hunt grasshoppers, centipedes, mole crickets, locusts and small rodents for their offspring. These endeavours also benefit humans as they help to control the number of insects and other animals which threaten our crops. The constant need to gather food for their young has sharpened the wits of the kestrels when taking advantage of the work of their human neighbours. They have learned that following combined harvesters is a very profitable activity due to the number of grasshoppers, rodents and other delicacies which flee their path and can be captured. However, what may be a benefit for the kestrels may also lead to tragedy for another bird of prey. The blind progress of the mechanical monster turns the cereal fields where the Montaguas Harriers usually live into traps. Fortunately, they have people to defend them. Groups of enthusiasts cover the crops of Extremadura and signpost the Montagu's harrier's nests to prevent the machines from sweeping them away. They also rescue chicks, taking care of them in their facilities, where they also breed individuals born in captivity. The young Montagos Harriers who have had to flee their nests, those who became orphans or those as this one, which has lost its wings under the blades of a combine harvester, are fed and cared for in the hope that they can be returned to the wild, strong and healthy. Beyond the safe haven where the Montagos Harriers are recovering, life remains difficult. Especially if you're a grasshopper at the height of the tenacious kestrels breeding season. An abandoned farmhouse may seem like the best shelter to evade them but there is nothing more fatal in nature than lowering your guard.
it has fallen into the trap woven by a cellar spider. It rushes to wrap its long legs around its victim, which vainly struggles to escape. The hunter is a female about to lay her eggs with a big appetite to be satisfied. So the males surrounding her, smaller in size, are very careful not to disturb her. This spider is a dainty gastronomy, which prefers to slowly absorb the fluids of the miserable grasshopper while it is still alive. Outside, the heat is becoming another serious threat for the young storks, which are living their first days on the roofs of the architectural treasures which adorn Placentia and Catharis, a city declared a World Heritage Site. The parents cannot always stay in the nest giving them shade. They need to go out in search of food and water for themselves and their young. It is an absence which becomes more distressing for the chicks the longer they spend beneath the scorching sun. However, there is a place in the heart of Extremadura which the sun fails to capture as its own. It is a hidden paradise of freshness lying low on the ground where the jabbering of the red-billed chaffs and rock pigeon can be heard at the height of the breeding season. The pigeons which populate our squares and streets today descend from these rock doves whose domestication began 4,000 years ago. But La Hayona has not always been like this. Several decades ago, it was ruled by the infernal explosions of dynamite and the pickaxes and shovels of the miners. When it was abandoned by man, nature was there to staunch the open wound. Nowadays, the former mind of La Hayona is a place full of animal and plant life made exceptional by a microclimate typical of more northern latitudes. In the darkness of its shafts, colonies of Mediterranean horseshoe bats also find safe havens. Far from the freshness that La Hayona offers its inhabitants, the young lesser kestrels are leaving their nests, tired of the heat and eager to start flying. What has not changed is their voracity. Brotherly 
love does not appear to preside over meals in the homes of kestrels. They fight mercilessly and fiercely defend each of the mouthfuls brought by their devoted parents. They don't even let them take off the legs they could choke on. The little owl impassively watches over their constant fights as it prepares to enjoy what it has captured. Its neighbours are not a threat to it. It knows the real danger comes from the sky. It has the worrying silhouette of a black kite. This is primarily a scavenger, but it does not disdain small live prey if it comes within reach of its claws. When the threat passes, the young kestrels return to the top of the church of Almandralejo to continue strengthening their wings and, of course, they maintain their heated arguments, putting them in constant danger of falling into the void. But not only their parents care for them here, they are also watched over by human eyes. Using robotic cameras, the members of the local association which looks after lesser kestrels ensure the welfare of the nests without disturbing them except when something serious occurs. They rush to rescue the fallen young kestrel to take it to their facilities where it will receive the necessary care and continue to grow until it can be released. Similarly, some of those which were born there, the young of pairs unable to return to nature, will even travel to other European countries to repopulate their skies. The summer heat which plagues the inhabitants of the skies above us also affects our domestic animals. It is therefore time for the sheep shearing. Unlike their wild cousins, domestic sheep never lose their wool, so the shearing, as well as being a source of raw textile material, is a health measure to prevent parasites and diseases. After being released from their woolen covering, the giant flocks set off in search of fresher destinations and pasture lands. It is almost never an easy migration and some will not complete it, overcome by the heat exhaustion or disease. In nature, when one life ends, others find an opportunity to continue. exceptional flying skills and its keen eyesight usually allow the common raven to be the first guest at the carrion feast. But it must hurry to eat as much as it can 
because its very presence is an unintentional signal to other diners which it will not be able to intimidate. From above, the griffon vultures have detected the black silhouette of the raven on the ground, indicating two things. There is food and no danger. The older adults are usually the first to descend swiftly to ensure that there really is no danger and to enjoy the best mouthfuls. Their presence also becomes a signal to the other vultures which are patrolling the skies, calling them down to the feast without delay. Within this seemingly chaotic uproar of all against all fights to reach the corpse, there is a certain underlying order whereby the oldest ones eat first. When their appetite is sated, they give way to the younger ones. Of course, the latter will have to fight more and settle for the less nutritious pieces. But the rules of the griffon vultures do not apply to the powerful black vulture. The largest and heaviest bird in Europe seems to take pleasure in enforcing these qualities on its resigned cousins in order to obtain a privileged seat at the banquet, although it does not actually need them. In addition to pointing out the prey, the griffon vulture's previous work of cutting it up into pieces is very useful for the black vulture because it is a cyberit which prefers small and select pieces of the carrion. Other scavengers, such as this young Egyptian vulture, also invite themselves to the meal, although their smaller size relegates them to having to settle for the leftovers. All these scavengers perform effective sanitary work, which also benefits the farmers, as they remove the corpses from the field, the source of diseases to wild and domestic animals. This female golden oriole will also discover what it means to fight over food. Reserved and very difficult to observe, it hides in the foliage of the vines and the fig trees which grow next to the farmhouses and cottages to taste its fruits, already in season. if she can, because she is not alone. The starlings also want the food. They are smaller, but a flock of noisy starlings working as a group can intimidate even the bravest.
swellings are very beneficial to us due to the large number of insects they capture. But they can also be a headache when they hover over a vineyard or a fruit plantation. Oblivious to the battle for the grapes which is being waged in the trees providing shade for the watering hole. A multitude of birds turn it into a crowded beach where they can clean themselves and alleviate the summer heat. With a full belly, the black vulture returns to its huge nest towards the top of a leafy cork oak, where its only chick awaits, still some time away from being able to fly for the first time. This pair is in luck because it is not common for black vultures to bear offspring every year. These imposing scavengers are as faithful to their partners as to the nests they have built and repaired together over the years. But today, something is going to disturb the family's peaceful life. The blows of the axes and the shouts of the men flood the copse of cork oaks where the family of black vultures live. The time has come to extract the cork. The men strip the bark from the trees with the help of nothing but their axes and the centuries of experience inherited from their ancestors, which has taught them not to damage the trees or those which live in their crowns. Thus, in nine years' time, the time it takes for the oak to regenerate its cork, they will be able to come back for a new consignment. The process is performed in the traditional manner, including taking the bark to a clearing in the forest. Only the horses are able to advance along the steep and rugged terrain. The extraction of the cork is a further example of how the traditional exploitation of the natural resources of the pasture land can coexist in a perfect and respectful balance with its biodiversity. Like its pasturelands and forests, the rivers and reservoirs of Extremadura display enormous biodiversity. The Weir in Badajoz is one of the most unique special protection areas for birds in urban environments in the region. It covers a wide area around the Guadiana River in the old part of the city.
grey herons, black-headed and black-backed gulls, egrets, night herons, cormorants and cattle egrets are just some of the many birds which find a wonderful place to breed or feed here. Although such competition sometimes makes life difficult. Not even when you are in luck. Like this spoon bill, can you proclaim victory? First, you have to run away to escape from your companions. Always alert to any opportunity to take advantage of the success of others. Spoonbills fish by touch. They rhythmically move their wide beaks until they touch their prey, triggering a frantic chase until they finally capture it. Something mysterious and magical is happening in the fields of Extremadura to announce the end of summer. Obeying an age-old instinct brought on by signals which we are yet to understand, the starlings gather in huge flocks. adults and young which have abandoned their families will no longer be separated until they begin their winter migration together. Until this crucial moment in their lives arrives, they cross the skies creating frenzied clouds of black wings. not the only ones. The white stalks congregate in flocks of hundreds. They no longer return to their nests, but roam the territory, eating and sleeping together until they finally set off southwards. The lesser kestrels also seek the company of their peers during these last days of summer before the start of their long journey to warmer climates. For the young which were rescued or bred in captivity, it is an even more extraordinary moment. It is time to fly in freedom. Martins, swifts, swallows and bee-eaters are feeling the call of Africa just as strongly. Soon, these winged neighbours from the sky will disappear from the towns and villages. But many others will remain here and continue to share our homes, skies and streets with us just like they did yesterday, like they have done for centuries. We will share the cold of winter and the hope of spring. 